General Glenn the and Phil. Uh, laid our program that uh, puts burdens on all those who must make these decisions uh, as to whether the mission should go or not. I, I think Hello, it's been, uh, very everybody. But, uh, Today we've I got a new program. This is going to be split string across to LCDs, or SOL for short. So first thing you're going to want to do is go into your program block, edit the code, browse the workshop, and find SOL, split string across LCDs. It'll load this code in, and it's a really simple helper fu function, or method. So basically, what it does is you can input a string, a terminal block list, a max display count if you want to. The Basically, most LCDs are going to be running around 18, so that's pretty good. You might want to cut it to 17, and we'll show you how to do that in a bit. And a character to split the string. So this is going to be like your deliminator for your string. Most people are going to be using a carriage return or a slash N. You know, with the line feeds, this is going to be what's on your enter key. So the first thing that this does is it creates a new array off of this string that you put in over here. That array is going to have is going to be a split of every line that you have in there. So after we get that that array, we can do some fancy dancy math, and this math will tell us how many LCD panels you're actually going to need depending on the length of that that string. After we do that, we're going to create a new string. This is going to be for your LCD data. It's going to be what's going to be displayed on all of your LCDs. We're going to iterate through this and we'll find out what display we should be putting the data on or what display we're currently on with the counts. And we're going to be forcing all the data that we find into that array that we created. After that, we do some fancy stuff down here. So we're going to end up doing a sort for the blocks and we're going to be collecting all the custom names so we can alphabetize the data. We're going to do the alphabetizing with the array sort function and then we're going to be pushing that data through a new terminal block list. That terminal block list is going to get all of the data and it's going to sort it based off of that array that we had sorted up here. After that, it's going to take that new array that we've created and send all the data to the public screens that we have. So it's really simple. For you guys, you're going to be doing the editing and coding. You're just going to have a one line to push the data through, which is going to be a call to the function sol, the string data, and the terminal blocks that you have. This is L blocks, list of blocks, right? And if you want to, you can change the the amount that's going to display per screen. So if you have your font sizes changed and you can also change the delimitator. So let's see what we currently have. Oh, we want to remember that. If we look over here, we've got this giant screen of LCD panels. We've got panel one, two, three, four, five, and six. These panels will, are going to be in that order for display. So it's going to first show the data up on the top, then bottom, and it's going to go through. Let's go ahead and turn that antenna off so it doesn't block our view of anything. Ah, we'll hit tab two. What the heck? So the first thing that you're going to need to do is, in our example, we're just creating a group called Sol. And that group's going to have all of our LCD panels in it. So we go back into the programming code, check this block out. So we've got a, a simple main function in here that's going to help us get the, get the display data or at least put some type of sample information up there. So we've got a first thing is going to be our constant that de defines the data group or you can do it by each, each name of the block. So we, here's a quick example of doing a search blocks of name which will return and I my terminal block of all the data. But we're going to be doing it through another function called get block groups with name. So it's just like get block with name, except for it's a little function down here that I wrote. So it'll take in, it'll return a, a, my terminal block, and it'll take in a group name that you have defined, which is what we defined up there. It's going to iterate through all of the blocks that it finds, and it's going to match up a name and then return that block group. Or it's going to return nothing if you can't find it. You can ignore this message down here. It's just push a debug string for uh, you know my testing to the first antenna. So back up to the main code here. 
so the first thing that we did was we grabbed this group. The next thing we're doing is just putting in some garbage data. This is going to be something that you want to have displayed, like a content of your cargo, um, any information that you want to have spread across all those LCDs in the background. And then we put an extra line on the bottom so it says that we finished it, just to let us know that we have enough LCD panels to make everything work. And then the last piece of it is pushing this data that we just randomly generated and the IMI terminal blocks through. So let's go ahead and kick this to 100. That's going to be pretty close to 18 times 6. I think it's 108. We're going to check this code. Remember an exit. And if you check the code and you don't have this group made, it's going to fail. So on our little button panel, we've got number 1, 2, 3, and 4. We're going to hit number 1. And boom, look at all that data that just appeared. We've got lines 1 through 18, 19 through 36, and it starts again 37 down to 54, 54 to, what is that, 72, 73 to 90. And look at this bug. We got a little uh, display bug here. Oh, it just flipped. Oh, jeez, look at that. So the data is still on these things, but it, I think it's a bug in game. I have no idea how to fix it. So you're kind of screwed if it does this. Sometimes if you jump into other cockpits or um, just kind of move your environment, it'll show the data. Um, as you can see, the data is still in that terminal, but it's showing offline for some reason. So, well, I hope you guys like this. Um, it's just a helper function. It's not gonna do anything by itself, really. I'd appreciate it if you copied the copyright stuff. It's just to make sure that the code stays free. It's a limited GPL in version 3 or a lesser GPL. And it just means that you can package it with any code that you want to. Do anything that, you know, till your heart's content. Just making fun code. And it's got a link to my Steam workshop. And just copy out the... Boom! The method right here. And you're good to go. If you want, you can also use this method here for the, the get groups too. Whatever you guys want to do, have fun, enjoy. If you want to actually use this and post something into the comments, that would be awesome. I love seeing what you guys create. I like to, I love the community with space here, space engineers. I just think it's the greatest thing ever. So I hope you guys enjoy this code. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.